Yes, yes. Welcome in. This is Balloon Party, driven by Mungan S. St. Louis Acura, Mungan S. Burkhardt, Alton Toyota. Tim McCurdy, Jackson Burkett with you for the next hour of broadcasting here on 101 and the 101 ESPN YouTube channel, Jackson. And there were 56 people just waiting for us to start up today's program, including Dan Jansen, Droid Effects, John Scores, and Tiny PP, a.k.a. Don Corleone of the YouTube chat. Wonderful to have them on board, as well as all of you at work, in your vehicles, or perhaps you are in the YouTube chat as well. Come on in. The water is warm and text into the program. Air Comfort Service text line 314-399-9646. Jackson has prepared a smorgasbord today for you, and it's called the Little Piddles Weekend Wrap-Up? That's right. That's right. I mean, we got a lot. Plus, we got Jeremy Rutherford at 1045. I want to play the Drew Bannister sound. This isn't necessarily the lead but I just want everybody to hear this, and it's going to build the foundation for my conversation with JR coming up at 1045. And I just want you to listen and then come away with what your first thought is after you hear Drew Bannister addressing the media on his time to date as Blues head coach, which will feature at a minimum one more game, but possibly at a maximum one more game as the Blues close out the season on Wednesday night against the Dallas Stars. Here's Drew Bannister. Yeah, it's been a great experience. I mean, the, the players, the coaching staff, the management have been outstanding to me. Uh, it's been a great learning experience for me, obviously, for for myself, uh, you know, as a coach to grow, uh, be here. Uh, the players have been great to me. Uh, like I said, the coaching staff coming in, um, you know, not being one of the guys coming in here and them welcoming me. And, and uh, this is a hard working group. Like this coaching staff puts a lot of work into what they do behind the scenes, which people don't see a lot of. We spend a lot of hours here and and that group's, you know, they really dug in this year for, for this group and the players to, to make sure that we were prepared and give ourselves a chance to to get in the playoffs. So, I mean, you know, we're equally disappointed, you know, like we're disappointed in, in how this ended for, for ourselves and for our players and for the organization for the for the fans but you know for for myself you know certainly this has been a great experience for me and i appreciate the opportunity and i appreciate the you know the effort that the players and the coaches gave each day when you hear that what is your first reaction 314-399-9646 air comfort service tax line and of course the uh the youtube chat uh my first reaction was he has been told he is not going to be the head coach and i was wondering if that is what you hear i don't think a guy who's still in the mix for the job talks about it being a great learning experience for him i think he's probably more in campaign mode and so if indeed that is the case and i don't know that to be the case but if indeed that is the case uh then the question is who will be coaching the Blues when October rolls around and they open up the 2024-2025 season. Jackson, your read. Yeah, it definitely sounded reflective. It sounded like a person who was very thankful and grateful for the opportunity to do what he's done now for the past couple of months. It did not seem to me like someone whose name is still in contention to be the permanent head coach. I think uh, you would hear like stuff like, and I'm excited if I'm brought back. I'm excited for what the future can hold. You'd see her something to that extent. Instead, it was all reflection. And I think that nothing he said was wrong or came off wrong, but it definitely seemed like somebody who was not going to be coaching the team come October. Personally, uh, so the text inbox agrees. He thinks he's gone. That's from the 636. Uh, yeah, that banister soundbite sounded like a farewell. That's from the 618. Uh, so, yeah, that sounds like a man who knows he's not going to be the coach of the St. Louis Blues after his last game. That's from the 314. Okay, so we're all on the same page. That's that was I heard that and I go, okay, he knows. And I kind of figured that that was the case. But then the direction they go with the new hire will also, I think, indicate the direction that mm-hmm. they plan to go this off season. Because if you are going to go with one of the more established coaches, um, I would imagine that expedites the timeline as much as they possibly can. I know that they're at the mercy of the cap and some contracts. Anyway, Jeremy Rutherford is going to be with us at 1045, and we will have an in-depth discussion on that. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I yield the stage to a man who goes by Piddles. Piddles here, and I think when in doubt, the lead is the Cardinals. When in doubt, 
The Louis, the Cardinals, they dropped two on the weekend. Just for, 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 for the purpose of letting the audience get behind the scenes of the show prep meeting, I was arguing it was the Battle Hawks winning in San Antonio. Yeah, you campaigned hard for the Battle Hawks in their 31-24 defeat. Jackson went with the Cardinals, so all right, here you go. Yeah, yeah, I, I pushed right past that, and, uh, you know, Kakao fans, come after me. Don't come after Tim. Thank you. 314-399-9646. But we're going to leave with the Cardinals, uh, and I'm just going to ask it point blank. What's the deal with sitting Mason Wynn twice a week? I get sitting on some weekdays or afternoon games, but when he is your most effective hitter, there has to be a conversation if Brandon Crawford can get in at some other position. Is this just a populist Cardinal dissension take, or is there merit to the complaint? Well, I asked uh, Randy Carrick. Character and uh, Brooke Grimsley, um, what the big topic was on the opening drive, as I'm one to do when I walk in here to do balloon party, and they said Mason Wynn. Yeah. And Mason Wynn's sitting is what has people really fired up. Uh, and I understand that, especially considering he is one of the guys, one of the few guys who is performing offensively above what expectations would be. And he's really performing above what expectations would be. Um, John Denton of uh, MLB.com had a uh, tweet about uh, yesterday with the explanation from Ali Marmol that they want to keep his body fresh. He needs a day. We talked about it and his body can use it. He's swinging it well. He's playing good defense and he's running the bases. But in conversation with him, today would be a good day for him to have off. This is going to be a long season for him and keeping him fresh will be important. Our communication has been good and we agreed today would be a good day to rest. I I don't I don't I'm I'm surprised by that explanation. I'm surprised by the reasoning. He's twenty two. There's other guys who are older who are playing more time than than he is, and I just I don't I don't really understand. I'll be honest with you. Um, I guess this kind of speaks also to the fact that this is getting as much attention as it is to how blah the situation is in 2024. That a guy who you know is certainly in the early stages of his career not playing because otherwise there really isn't a whole lot that's all that surprising. You know what I mean? There isn't greatness, Mm -mm. nor is there like, holy crap, this, this team, they're just kind of, this is, they're stuck in neutral. They're they're seven and nine and they're a hybrid. They're a team that's kind of trying to hold on all while not necessarily fully transitioning. And so, uh, yeah, the fact that he's not playing is strange given the reason that he's not playing, but you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily something that, you know, I think that is criminal. Uh, it just speaks to team isn't that great. Team doesn't really hit. Team has the fourth lowest run output in the National League. And the one guy who has been hitting so far through 16 games is only playing four or five games a week. And the reason given is we've got to save his body and he's 22. So it's a li- that part is the part that stands out to me. Jackson, your thoughts? Yeah, I, to an extent, understand uh, keeping Brandon Crawford sharp in cases where he'll be pinch hitting or if he has to come in for injury, you got to keep him sharp. Understand that to an extent. I understand Mason Wynn has not played the 162-game schedule in his young career. Understand that. But when you are in desperate need for offense, and when you look at the final scores, the Cardinals are in desperate need for offense. Taking out your most effective hitter, also very effective with runners in scoring position, and you take him out twice a week, it's, it's really tough to explain that away. And, and like I said, I understand some of the reasoning behind it. I understand putting guys like Mats and Sonny Gray on pitch counts to keep them healthy. When you got a young player who's playing outstanding to start a season, keep that momentum going. Just sitting them like damn near every afternoon game and twice a week is not what the Cardinals need at this moment. And so for that reason, like I said, like can Brandon Crawford literally play anywhere else? Can he play second? Can he play third anywhere else but shortstop? Because I think you need win in there every single day. Uh, for the record, uh, Gorman, Arenado, Scott have all played all 16 games. Donovan's played 15. Goldschmidt's played 15. And then Mason Wynn has played 14 of 16, along with Jordan Walker, uh, 14 of 16. I'll tell you the thing that, that I, the segues right into, that I am concerned about is Jordan Walker. Me too, man. 
Oh, you agree with that? I mean, he got a triple. This on, was not part of the Little Piddles weekend wrap no. up. It's a surprise topic. He got a triple on Saturday, but it's because he chopped one down the line at third. And also, I'll put something in predictionary right now. Oh. One, one of these days, Jordan Walker is going to get hurt with his head first slides. He has no clue how to. He like belly flops onto the ground and like. Kadunk kadunks into the base. I like it, that kadunk kadunk. I had no way of describing how he does it. Perfect. It was uh, wonderful. I think than, people are going to start using kadunk kadunks. Kadunk. He did it on that Saturday uh, afternoon game against the Marlins when he slid into second, and then Saturday sliding into third. He's going to get hurt. Slide in feet first, Jordan. Please, we can't have more injuries. Uh, for the record, he's hitting 178, eight for uh, 45 on the season with no home runs and two RBIs. I mean, that's, that's terrible. That's that's not something that, you know, if this was his first season and he didn't have a full season under his belt, but just considering what the expectations were, the directions it was hand, the direction it was heading right into March of 2023 and where it is at mid-April 2024, uh, it's a little, it's a little strange and concerning. So, uh, your thoughts on Jordan Walker also welcome along with your thoughts on Mason Wynn. 314-399-9646 air comfort service text line. The YouTube chat is open for business as well. And Stephen Wildwood has left a mic drop. He has. So we'll have that for you. Jeremy Rutherford at 1045, uh, more of the little Piddles weekend wrap up as we head to Augusta national next. This is balloon party. I want to want ESPN. James Carlton, the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency, is my insurance agent, and I would like for him to become your insurance agent as well. Once you make the switch, they do all the paperwork for you. The number is 314-961-4800, or just go online at carltoninsurance.net. That's James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency with 363. Three five-star reviews, and if you read those reviews on Google, you will see people raving about one thing over and over and over again, and that is the customer service, the attention to detail, the manner with which the staff gets back to people, all being second to none. It's the reason I made the switch, and it's the reason I'm very happy I made the switch. In addition, they're always looking for ways to save you money. If you have a driver who just turned 16 but is still on your policy, still might be 17, 18, 19, 2021. 20, well, that's where James has found he saved a lot of money for our listeners. It's James Carlton. 314-961-4800 or go online at carltoninsurance.net.
Welcome back. It's Balloon Party 101 ESPN. Timothy Michael McKernan, Jackson Bennett Burkett with you here on the program. And we are in the midst of the Little Piddles weekend wrap up. Uh, Jackson, uh, you uh, you said we got a mic drop? Oh, we do. Matter <laughs> of fact. And we got Stephen Wildwood. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here's the mic drop. I mean, just not hitting right now. It'll come around. Stop it! Half the team is hitting under 200, and the only guy hitting over 300, you won't even put in the lineup every day. What the hell's going on, Ali? And what's the media this town talking about? The Masters! Why don't you two master the art of holding people accountable, get on a plane to Oakland, and get a ticket to the game? There's only like 100 people who go to that game, in the whole game, I want you holding Allie accountable for all these stupid, idiotic moves. And the next thing you do when you get home is you go down to Bush Stadium, get a hold of that bow tie, and tell his ass we need players and we need them now. And the other thing, McCurden, if they ever, anybody gets married on opening day weekend again, you don't go to the damn wedding. In fact, Anybody who went to that wedding is banned from opening day festivities for 10 years. You tell that person most marriages fail anyway. You'll just go to the next wedding that they have. Tired of it. My God. Oh, I'm requesting a wellness check on, on Steve. My sister's wedding catches a stray. Yeah, man. And they're celebrating their nine-day anniversary today, so that's going to ruin that. That's going to be tough. They shouldn't listen to this segment. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, I've been held accountable, and uh, he is uh, not pleased with uh, the work that we're doing. Ten-year ban from opening day. I don't know how you're going to handle that. As ten the, years. Yeah, you are Mr. Opening Day. Uh, so I will not be allowed for the next ten years because I was at my sister's wedding. Yeah, that's going to be tough. It's unfortunate. going to be tough. Uh, uh, your thoughts are welcome. 314-399-9646. Uh, and, of course, the YouTube chat is uh, 101 ESPN. The cameras are sponsored by Air Alliance Team. And 116 friends of the feather have gathered to talk it over. And I see Cat Dad Gamers say we're going to have a whole Steve segment soon. Mm. Uh, Tiny PP says, Tim, take your ban. And Jeff R. says, Steve is on one today. There yep. you go. Yep. Uh, Stephen Wildwood going crazy. Jay Apple says it's his favorite part of the show. Uh, and the fans of Stephen Wildwood are active in the YouTube chat. Jackson, uh, what do we have on this Little Piddles? Uh, we can wrap up uh, that will include at 1045 Jeremy Rutherford discussing the future of the Blues head coaching position. Yeah, I can't wait to talk to JR, but serendipitous on the heels of that mm. mic drop talking about us mastering the art of holding somebody accountable that we're going to head down to Augusta and talk about the festivities that took wow. place over the weekend. Scotty Scheffler continues his dominance on pro golf yesterday with his second green jacket in three years. Put yourself in the role of leadership with golf and other sports. Do you think leagues and commissioners prefer dominance and dynasties over parity year to year? Is golf different in that sense from other leagues? And which do you prefer to see? Wow. Nice. Do you, you macroed it really nicely. Thank you. Well, first off, and I will answer your question, but first off, uh, tip of the cap to a St. Louisan who won the millionaire maker, the $2,000 entry, uh, on DraftKings yeah. with his lineup. And it's a friend of one of our producers on TMA, KG and O-Town. And he sat with him as he watched the guy win a million dollars yesterday. That's crazy. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he was texting me. KG was texting me during it, and he was telling me, like, what needed to happen. And I was watching under that, in that sense, and I could feel the sweat, and I had nothing on the line. I couldn't imagine the possibility of winning seven figures. So he had Scheffler, Ludwig, so the top two, yeah. Tommy, Tommy, Fleet, Fleet, who finished T3. Yep. with Homa and Morikawa. Uh, and then you have some of the lower-cost guys, Adam, Adam Shank, Shank, and then two other players. I don't know if you recall. Bryson them. was one of them. Oh, yeah, Bryson as yeah. well, along with it. Boy, how do you afford all that? Because uh, Tommy, not. Tommy, Fleet, Fleet wasn't that. Anyway, guy won a million dollars. Yeah. So God bless. Um, I like, I like individually when there is a dominating presence in sport. I prefer it. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how to explain that, 
So while I was present and heartbroken in New Orleans in February of uh, 2002 when the Patriots began their dynasty and ended what we thought was going to be the start of the Rams dynasty, um, I felt like it legitimized the the large stage of the Super Bowl when the Patriots were in it. Um, I liked the Yankees being what they were from 96 to whenever year you would say it ended, I guess 2009. Um, and I wanted the Cardinals to play them so badly in a yeah. World Series. I still want that. It hasn't happened since 64, so it hasn't happened in my lifetime. I'd like to see it. Um, and, uh, you know, the Blues going up against the Red Wings when you had that that core, it made it feel bigger even if they weren't necessarily still the best team, but the 2002 Red Wings, one of the best teams I've seen. Uh, obviously, the Bulls run uh, in the 90s, and whoever you would take, I mean, the Lakers had their run in the Spurs early 2000s. And, and, and then the Spurs, I always felt like, I felt, I don't know, I didn't feel like the Spurs necessarily had the cachet of other dynasties, but certainly the numbers would back up that they did, and then the Warriors. Um, I don't know if I'm leaving anybody out here from recent dynasties. And then when you talk about individual, you would talk about, of course, Tiger Woods, if you don't want to, you know, go into take your pick of like a Sampras-like run in, right, yeah. in tennis or Jokic or yeah, okay. uh, Federer. Uh, so w with all of that uh, said, I like this. I think he's an incredibly likable guy. The thing about him, though, versus Tiger is he's so understated in that you don't have uh, a sense that he's as dominant as he is because he doesn't carry himself with the flair that Tiger or other players do. Like Brooks Kepka is a major championship killer and has a real swagger about it. There's a personality trait that people either really like with him or really don't like with him. Scheffler, it's like, man, some people probably would call him boring. Yeah. But at the same time, he is a killer. And when I was on the air last week saying, I hope he doesn't run away with it, it wasn't like I have a feeling. It's all about the data. And golf, I think, is the most data-driven prediction, predictive sport because you, Scotty Sheff, what Scotty Scheffler is doing from 75 yards to 125 yards away and his proximity to the hole with his approaches is, is historic. He's 13 feet from the hole on average. The tour average is 19 feet. I mean, he's a full 33% better than the tour average. And on top of it, he can chip. And it's not like he hits it a short way. He's dominant. Yeah. He, he just doesn't necessarily have the cachet. But now that he's won two Masters, he's a five-foot putt away from winning four straight events. He has beaten 446 golfers in the last four events he's played and was one foot, one five-foot putt away from beating 447. Everybody he's faced. Um, I think that gets people's attention. And even if he is a dynamic personality or not, people start paying attention because there is a dominant force. The difference is is that unlike the Yankees, who are hated because of payroll or they're just the Yankees, Duke hated because, oh, they're wealthy prep school kids, uh, Alabama, oh, Alabama fan, I hate Saban, whatever it is. And then if you want to go to take your pick Patriots. of the Patriots and the Spygate and, Controversy and, and left Belichick. Right. Yeah. So uh, is that I don't really know what you can find on Scotty Scheffler that you're not going to like. Just the fact that he isn't, like, the most dynamic personality is his only, like, that's the detractor, is that he's just not. But then his speech yesterday on the on the green, when he receives the green jacket, is thanking the volunteers, thanking the staff in the in the clubhouse, thanking the, sh the, the, the people in the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, getting emotional, talking about his parents, his, his, his caddy, uh, who he had make the walk with him, Ted Scott, who yeah. caddied for Bubba Watson in two Masters championships. Uh, I don't know what you can't like about him. Right. You know, and by the way, I wanted somebody to emerge, even though I had him on rosters, to, to make it a thrilling back nine. We really haven't had a thrilling back nine at Augusta maybe since Tigers in 2019. Yeah. I didn't realize Hideki Matsuyama only won by one against Zalatoris until you called that up today. Yeah. But Scheffler won comfortably to the point that he could, like, Four putt. seven putt yeah, on 18 back in, in 22. And Rom won comfortably last year. And again, Scheffler wins comfortably this year. Um so I like the dominance, and I cannot wait. I have more anticipation for the PGA in May than I would have had he not won. 
And honestly, I am probably one of only like 10 people who are currently hearing my voice right now who was paying attention to the Texas Children's Open a few weeks ago. But I wanted him to win that because I wanted him to be on a winning streak going into Augusta where he was only a four to one. I mean, four to one to win a tournament is unheard of in golf when you're talking about so many people participating. Yeah. Uh, he's plus 375. Is that what it is right now? I saw some places have him up to plus 450. Okay. So either PGA. way, it's the same kind of thing at Valhalla for the PGA championship personally i like it i like and respect him and it's just it's it's understated dominance that's what he is doing out there and uh i have a great appreciation for it as a golf nerd because i'm just in awe of his ability to approach and then also to get up and down and i think the reason why other players might be hitting to quadrants on greens there and he could be more comfortable making what would be considered aggressive plays, like he went for 13 and Mm -hmm. 2, even though he's got a comfortable lead, because he knows he can do it. And then even if he didn't do it, he knows he can get up and down better than anybody. It's, It's like if you do play the game, and the thing that most, you know, players who are getting comfortable playing, what do they do with their putts? They leave them short. Why? Because, oh, God, I don't want to see it go past. Once you start being comfortable putting, that's when you go, okay, I run it past because if I miss by three feet, I know I'm going to make the three-footer. And you might not make it 100% of the time, but if you make it 90% of the time, it's still a win by going for the hole as opposed to just kind of... Tapping it, yeah. I was going to say bitching it up there. Yeah. Well, to be more politically correct. Right, right. Well, so uh, that's that's what he's able to do, and that's what separates him from everybody else. It's just he doesn't wear red on Sundays and isn't fist pumping, and so it isn't necessarily held with the same kind of, and not to say he's Tiger Woods, I want to make that clear, but the dominance that he is displaying and has over the last couple of years is the first time we've seen anybody do it since Tiger Woods. We've had a whole bunch of, he might be the next Tiger Woods, he might be the next Tiger Woods, none of them were. He could be Scotty Scheffler with his second major championship in only, uh, he's 27 years old. Fifth major start. Yeah. Was, Fifth uh, Masters. Fifth Masters, I meant to say. Uh, and uh, the man is on an absolute tear. So Scotty Scheffler uh, wins the Masters yesterday. Ludwig Ober, keep an eye on that guy. That was his first major. Yeah. He is sick mm. and was walking around with a smile on his face the whole time. Keep an eye on that. Those guys are also smiling assassins. Uh, Max Homa, who's a great, great guy, and I'm pulling for him to win. A wonderful finish there. And uh, Colin Morikawa, had he won yesterday, he would have been a win away from the career Grand Slam. And that would have struck me as kind of flying under the radar yeah, relative time. to that accomplishment. Uh, so Valhalla is the next stop for a major. Hilton had the next stop this week. Scotty's currently listed as playing. Oh, yeah. It's a signature event. I know. But, I mean, his wife is due. So I'm curious if that will actually happen. If he will go to Dallas. I'm sure he's already in Dallas. And then fly back to South Carolina, I guess, tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, holy crap. And then I would imagine you will see him take some time off. Yeah, I think she's doing two weeks. So it'll actually kind of fall in between Masters and the PGA Championship, which is probably ideal for the Shuffler family. But I always, I mean, I will always watch that because I, I, I just played that course less than two weeks ago. Uh, and it's not a course where you can just bang driver. But, I mean, that suits a guy who's a wizard with his irons and his approaches and short game. So uh, can't wait to watch it again this weekend with the RBC Heritage Signature Event at Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. All right, Jeremy Rutherford is going to join us coming up at 1045. More of the Little Piddles Weekend wrap up. This is Balloon Party on 101 ESPN. Munganass St. Louis Acura, Munganass Burkhardt Alton Toyota, presenting sponsor of Balloon Party, official automotive provider of TMA and the Tim McKernan Show podcast, the place I go to get my cars. My wife just got her car uh, taken care of last week at uh, St. Louis Acura off of Manchester, and I can't say enough good things about the people I've gotten to know at Munganass St. Louis Acura and Munganass Burkhardt Alton Toyota. Uh, When you have an issue with your car, 
it's a headache. It's something you kind of dread. When you have to get a car, it's a headache. It can be something you kind of dread. And that used to be the way it was for me. And now, working with Jamie Burkhardt and Clayton Patterson and Peter Munganest, uh, along with Ryan Seiberg in the service department, now it's like, oh, that's a chance to just text him and, you know, Say hello, uh, because it's going to be something you know is taken care of and taken care of uh, absolutely 100% positively. I can't say enough good things about them, and I am thrilled that they are the presenting sponsor of this show. It's Munganass, St. Louis Acura.com and AltonToyota.com. This is Action Jackson with a Sports Center update driven by Johnny Landoff Chevrolet and Johnny Landoff Autoplex. The Blues win yesterday. They will take on the Stars. Uh, that will be Wednesday night. You can catch that right here on the Home of the Blues. 101 ESPN pregame at 7.30 p.m. The final puck drop of the season at 8.30 p.m. The Cardinals lose yesterday, losing two of three to the Diamondbacks, but they are back tonight taking on the Oakland Athletics. 8.40 is your first pitch. Sonny Gray on the mound for the Redbirds, and tomorrow night, NBA play in action as the Lakers and Pelicans will play, and the Warriors and Kings following that tomorrow to start off the NBA playoffs. That was another Sports Center update driven by Johnny Landoff Chevrolet and Johnny Landoff Autoplex. See them at Landoff.com. Chevy Together we drive. Are you kidding me?
Welcome back. This is Balloon Party 101 ESPN. Jeremy Rutherford with us at 1045-ish. Uh, and I can't wait to talk about the Blues coaching situation with him because it certainly sounds like Drew Bannister knows his last game is this Wednesday uh, in Dallas. Jackson, you've got this Little Piddles weekend wrap-up. We've talked Cardinals, Mason Wynn. We've talked Cardinals, Jordan Walker. We've talked Masters. We've talked Blues. What do you have up your sleeve next? I mean, City wins 1-0. Battle Hawks win in San Antonio. Thought it was the lead. Didn't get my vote across. What's next on the Little Piddles weekend wrap-up? Well, I'm a tad concerned sitting over here, Tim, because as you mentioned, teams... Is that the used Band-Aid that you have sitting next to you? There is a used Band-Aid to my left here, and um, I'm not saying I will vomit, but if I do, you know the reason. Wow, 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 wow. I'm not gonna, I don't so know who's... Sounds like you're blaming Rocky, oh? No, I don't know whose Band-Aid it is. Well, I, I mean, do. who ran the board before? Uh, Rocky did. No further questions. <laughs> but that doesn't... Have, you know, maybe... I just know it's a, it's a Band-Aid, and it has been on someone's person, and now it's sitting on this console, and uh, it's staring at me like the Green Goblin. I'm Willem mm. Dafoe. That's the Green Goblin mask, wow. and I'm going to vomit. Wow, wow, wow. Regardless, um, the, uh, I don't have a question about the, the Battle Hawks, nor do I have a question about City, and that's not a slight at either franchise. Unbelievable. I was un. <laughs> I was unaware until yesterday afternoon that the Battle Hawks played the San Antonio Brahmas. I was aware that City was playing, and they won 1-0 over Austin. Uh, Joe Klaus with a nice Klaus, little goal. Klaus, this is the first goal of the year. Yeah, great to see out of the uh, Brazilian, but... Oh, you were watching instead of the Masters? No, 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 no. But I was, yeah, I keep up, I keep up the tabs with the uh, local soccer team. Now, as I am going to be frank with the folks, I don't... Honesty and media. I don't really watch most of, most of the Battle Hawks games. And okay. by much, I mean I haven't watched a second. But that is not necessarily a slight on the franchise. And maybe it is. <laughs> Just kidding. I love the Bellocks. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the local teams. Yeah. I mean, what a, what a pivot I, right I there. I watch every single one of them religiously, regardless of whether golf tournaments are or are not going on or, or NBA playoff basketball. Thank you. I don't care about those two things. I care about the local team. So our question is what the Knicks – clinching the two seed in the East. Is that what we're doing here? I'm curious what they're going to look like without Julius Randle in the playoffs, but all that aside. Okay. Uh, is there another question, or did I catch you unawares? Kind of been vamping, hoping I could I noticed, fall ass backwards noticed, into a question about it. I noticed it. that. Well, oh, I mean, my God. I'm going into the Air Comfort Service text line because I know they're not going to be happy. Well, I think the obvious question. Uh, the first is just uh, the name of uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus Christ is what I just was sent in. Just kind of an observation. We're a couple weeks removed from Easter. Uh, then this one's not as uh, religious oriented. From the 618, you effing, and then it's a five letter word for cat or kitten, so he's not happy. <laughs> that, that, not watching the battle. Okay. Uh, and then uh, are the Battle Hawks local? They are based in Texas, and I just don't feel connected. Oh, there you go. You got some support. That's the now you need to need to, now you can become guy who discovered his take mid show. Yeah, how come this team isn't based now? I mean, I think the the oh, the real question when it comes to anything UFL or Battle Hawks is when they play in front of eleven thousand San Antonio. This is, um, you're, you're hijacking my take. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> this is my TMA take. People this guy is a dirty, rotten scoundrel. <laughs> Listen, takes are like their community takes. Well, I'll tell you, that's a shot at Twitter. And I'm dipping. Yeah, oh yeah. And I, Mason win. I'm dipping into the take pool here, and I'm pulling one out. I'm f I'm waving it off, drying it out. So I'll go ahead and give my take since I'm the one who came up with it. But I, but I do. But I do wonder this, and, and since we have Jr. coming up in a matter of moments, today is not the day to do it. But. I do wonder, and I know a lot of people in this audience are fans of the Battle Hawks, why St. Louis gets 40,000 plus. If St. Louis gets 40,000 plus for an 1130 kickoff uh, this coming Saturday against Memphis, I mean, that, I mean, with weather, I mean, it's not going to be as nice as it was this weekend, but it's still supposed to be decent. It's yeah. going to be in the 60s. What in the hell? What is going on? And this isn't me saying, what are you people doing? This I'm, I'm going, why? Because I think the we're doing this to shove it up Stan Kroenke's backside and the NFL's backside. I think that's that might be still a little of it. But why is it so successful here? And why is it such a, you know, would they have 12,000, I think, in San Antonio? 11,000, 12,000 yesterday. You know, we saw the Battlehawks play at Ford Field to open up the season. They didn't have many people there. What is it? And I and I I'd really like to to dive deeply uh, into a conversation on that 
perhaps some point this week what that's about. But I'm sure people who are listening can give their reasons. I mean, it's it's more like a party atmosphere, I think. Yeah. I don't think people are, like, emotionally attached. Uh, I think it's just uh, you can tailgate and have a good time with it. But, I mean, you can do that in San Antonio and Memphis and Detroit. And they're not sure getting not. crowds like they're getting in St. Louis. Uh, all right. Uh, JR is going to join us on the other side of the break. Tim McCartan, Jackson Burkett with you. It's Balloon Party, 101 ESPN. Hey, this is Tim McKernan for the Bath Authority. If your bath or shower is old, outdated, has mold, mildew, or broken tiles, you got to call the good people at the Bath Authority. The Bath Authority provides the highest quality bathroom remodeling products along with a world-class customer experience. Their modern, durable tubs and showers are designed with an exclusive high-tech polymer liner. And what that means to you is it'll be low-maintenance, resistant to mold and mildew, easy to clean, and last for decades. Plus, it comes with a lifetime warranty. Walk-in tubs, replace showers, tub to shower conversions, and more. Every unit is custom built. You pick the premium accents and accessories, including safety features like low profile showers, grab bars, and shower seats. All Bath Authority products are 100% made in the USA and can be installed in as little as one day by certified factory technicians. Call today. 314-347-0410 and get $1,000 off a new shower or bath plus 36 months of interest free financing you are their priority at the bath authority elevate your bathroom to a new level of luxury style and safety call today at 314-347-0410 to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get a thousand dollars off a new shower or bath plus 36 months of interest free financing the bath authority.com a better bath awaits
Welcome back to McKernan Jackson Burkett with you. And uh, unfortunately, Jackson is really taking a lot of shrapnel in the Air Comfort Service tax line. Uh, Jackson, would you like to issue a statement at all before we go to Jeremy Rutherford? I'd like to apologize. Oh, my gosh. To absolutely nobody. Wow. JR, we're just going to go right to you. I apologize <laughs> that you had to hear that. Yeah, I was telling Jackson during the break, uh, what a tight ship he runs. Uh, I get a text from him earlier this morning that said, hey, we still good for 1045. And then I hear you, Tim, say on TMI, hey, we've told uh, Jeremy he's coming on at 1045. We've got him for later. So thanks for uh, reminding, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 impressive. The, the show prep that goes on on TMA and balloon party, I would say it's second to none. These things don't just happen. Thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for saying it. Uh, JR, that means you probably heard us uh, play the Drew Bannister sound uh, that uh, I asked for the audience's uh, reaction to, and everybody has had the same reaction. That's a guy who knows he's not going to be uh, named full-time head coach. Uh, is that your uh, reaction as well, or perhaps your knowledge? Yeah, and even aside from that, and I'll get to that in a second, uh, I, I just get the impression um, that uh, that he won't be back as the head coach, and that's not anything that at this moment is concrete. It, it's just uh, don't get that sense right now. Um, and then the past couple of days, listening to Drew Bannister, as you mentioned, with the sound bite, uh, you know, seems sort of resigned to that fact. It seemed like his comments were spoken in a reflection manner. Uh, saying that he he thinks that uh, the team has yeah. been really loyal to him, the organization has, and and he really thanks them for this opportunity. He did say at one point, hope to uh, be able to continue to work on this, but uh, most of the comments I felt were in uh, in a reflection manner. So if we are going to operate on the premise that it's better than likely, at the very least, that he is not the next full-time Blues head coach, uh, that then gets us into the conversation about who now is the time. There's one game left, and then that will be the focal point of the conversation for the St. Louis Blues. What is your opinion, sir? Well, I think there's a lot of candidates out there, and there's a lot of candidates that uh, you look at and have a ton of experience. And Joel Quinville's name is going to rise to the top of that list. Of course, Joel Quinville speaking recently on the Cam and Strick uh, podcast, kind of saying at least what he would say, uh, would go on to say about the situation in Chicago. You know, I think everybody can see clearly that that is him making himself uh, uh, working his way back into the league. Uh, I think that at some point there's going to be a conversation with Gary Bettman about reinstatement or the ability to coach, however you want to phrase it. Uh, we did check on that a couple of days ago with the league, and the league said as of as of now, nothing. Um, so I think at some point that's going to come. Do the Blues have interest? I know that uh, they've had interest in the past in Joel Quinville, so I don't see why any of that would have changed because the interest I'm aware of that they had in him was after everything came out uh, in Chicago. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, but then also you have a lot of younger candidates. You have the Denver University coach who just won another uh, championship in the NCAA. Uh, a lot of veterans out there, Gerard Gallant. You know, what's going to happen with Jim Montgomery if they uh, lose in that first round? Right. I know you've touched on that. Yeah, just a lot of a lot of people out there who could be available, Tim. The, the question I would have is how long are they going to wait to get a guy like Quinville who it could take weeks, months to find out his situation with the league and then also – uh, the situation in Boston right. with Jim Montgomery. Do you wait until after that uh, playoff appearance? It looks like the Bruins are going to win the Atlantic. I mean, just from a math standpoint, they have two games left and they have a point lead on Florida, which would mean they would avoid a first-round matchup with the uh, the Leafs, who are sitting at 102 points. And it's just an absolute log jam for that final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. They could be playing one of four teams. Um, so with that all said, uh, looking at the landscape, um, do you think there's somebody that, that Doug Armstrong has had his eye on throughout the course of this season and, and, and or known even when Bannister was named the interim coach? Or do you think that this was let's see who's available when April rolls around conversation? Uh, to my knowledge, no. And could he come out Thursday when he speaks to the media after the season finale in, in Dallas on Wednesday and, and they identify you know, who they're going to move forward with? To, to, to my knowledge, that is not the situation, um, but it could be. I think that Doug realizes the landscape of, of coaching and, and guys become available 
uh, after the season, in the off season, you know, unless you've got a guy that you're really particular about, I can't imagine them going that direction prior to finding out which one of these other guys will be available. And Tim, the point that I've made a couple times recently to see if you agree with this is, you know, Doug Armstrong, and this is not to say that he's on any shaky ground with ownership because that's not the case. Tom Stillman has complete faith in Doug Armstrong, but let's be realistic. How long is he going to be around? Even if they're successful, uh, this could be his last coaching hire and, and, and he's got to get it right. He has said himself, he wants to leave this organization in a better spot than when he took it over. He's certainly done that with the Stanley Cup, but he's got to get this last coaching hire, uh, what could be his last coaching hire, right. And I think they're going to put all the time and effort and wait to see who's available before they do that. With regard to the coaching hire, you've talked about this a couple of times on Balloon Party and TMA, and I would imagine you've talked about it and written about it uh, on 101 ESPN and on The Athletic. If you are, take your pick of one of those more glamorous names that you cited that could be on the short list of candidates. Do you look at the Blues situation and the fact that they may be a couple of years away from really, really being contenders? Does that give you pause? Does it make the job less desirable? Or, on the other hand, if the Blues were to get one of those names that you cited, um, who certainly have cachet, does that then expedite the quote-unquote retooling for as much as they can expedite it considering the cap and the contracts and the age of some of the players in the system yeah so the first question first i've asked a number of people hey does a 60 65 year old retread coach or a guy that's been around and wants to win now and can probably get a job where he can win now what does this job look like here in st louis to that guy and i've been told there's one of 32 jobs in the league they'll take them they're not looking for yeah. necessarily a situation that's going to be absolutely perfect because probably uh, they're not going to be perfect so i think that uh, this job will be attractive to anybody out there even if they're in a win now mode and to answer your second question does that speed it up if you bring in a joel quinville a gerard Gallant, one of those guys who's been around you know i think it could potentially but it's all going to depend on what doug armstrong can do with the roster because we all know the prospects are going to be here in a couple of years maybe making an impact and three to four years, but it's all about this current roster, how Doug Armstrong can reshape it. I think that's going to have more of an impact on how quickly the Blues can win, not just a coach coming in here. Uh, Final question for you, just for time's sake. Jordan Cairo has had uh, a really good couple of months here, certainly a focal point, a lot of negativity uh, surrounding mid-December when Craig Berube was uh, let go and what transpired with him and the fans. Um, what are your thoughts on where Cairo's status will be heading into the off season? Here's the way I look at it. Uh, I think that he has played a lot better here lately, but to me, if I'm Jordan Cairo and I hear both Robert Thomas, my good buddy on the team and Drew Bannister, you know, I'm not sure what Cairo thinks about Bannister's thoughts, but you've had two people in the last week say, you know, I think he's played really competitively these last 10 games. And and to me, that would resonate with me. Why do people have to put a number on it? Well, because that's the time frame that you've really turned it up and, and played well. And, and I would do everything this off season to put myself in a position where when people are talking about me playing competitive, they don't have to put a game number on it. The last three games, last six games, last 10 games. So, you know, I think it's a good sign for him and, and for the blues. We'll see what happens as, he gets into the off season, you know, obviously the trade talk is always going to be there when you think about Jordan Cairo and then that uh, no trade clause kicking in in 2025. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, they still see the upside. He's still got 31 goals and uh, finishing strong. So I think there's always going to be belief from the organization in Jordan Cairo. There it is. Jeremy Rutherford with us every Monday here on Balloon Party on 101 ESPN throughout the course of the week and, of course, riding for the Athletic Blues and Stars, the season finale, pregame 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday here on 101 ESPN. JR, appreciate the time as always, sir. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, guys. Talk there he is. That's Jeremy Rutherford with us here, and it's time now time for BK and Ferrario as Jackson uh, will be responding individually to all of the texts uh, who are critical of his local sports knowledge. So if you did text that in, you'll be in a chat with Jackson here in a matter of, what, five, ten minutes? Is that yeah. when you're going to start responding? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's coming up as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, time for us to shut it down. BK and Ferrario are next for Jackson Bennett Burkett. I'm Tim McKernan. This has been Balloon Party, driven by Munganas, St. Louis Acura, and Munganas Burkhardt Alton Toyota on 101 ESPN and the 101 ESPN.